Our next guest is a writer, director, and an Emmy Award nominated actor you know from his work in shows such as Escape at Danamora and films like The Batman and The Fablemans. He stars in Dumb Money, which is in theaters and on demand now. Let's take a look. Hey, do you, do you remember back at Stonehill when they dared me to run that mile naked? Yeah, there was a crazy storm that night. Everybody remembers that. Okay. Hey, too, man. You don't think people remember your four minute, three second mile? Oh, what is this? A pep talk? Stop hiding. Seriously, okay? Stop being all meek and running away. What, you want me to run through lightning with my out? Yeah, please. Exactly that. Run through lightning with your out. You. Please welcome back to the show, Paul Dano, everybody. How's it going? It's great. It's great to have you back. I really uh, love this film. This is about the uh, GameStop, uh, I, don't say, I don't want to say scandal. The stock saga. The stock saga, yeah. exactly. And yet, uh, this is the second time we've had someone from the movie on, and we keep showing the clip of Pete Davidson talking about it. Yeah, which is a very small part of this movie. It's well, it's a, it's a big, it's a big yeah. small part of the film. It's a big so. small part. That's, you've said it. You've said it if, correctly. If you're Pete Davidson. It's easy to tell other people to run around with their <laughs> out. I guess. Yeah. yeah. You uh, you did play uh, the actual person you played in the movie, uh, Keith Gill. He was a runner in high school. This was an, a true thing. He, he was he was a runner. In fact, I think he got a scholarship running. I decided to start to run, you know, to 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 get into shape and feel like a real actor. And, and I started waking up before my kids got up. I'd go to the track behind the, the school that's closest to us. And then I, I get to, to to work to go film the scene. And we are indeed filming on a track that's behind a school. But the track we're, we're actually filming on is behind a high school. And it turns out the track that I was running on was behind an elementary school. Oh, gotcha. And they're, they're two different sizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, you know, if I did like four laps on the elementary school track, I felt pretty good about myself. Yeah. And doing one lap on the high school track, I didn't feel so good about myself. Yeah. So, it was, yeah. I, so I will say, through movie magic, I thought you were a pretty believable runner. So yes. well done. Yeah. I like, though, that you showed up to set and you're like, I can do four laps. And then, like, <laughs> you're like, I might have gotten that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I, you know, I remember this story as it was happening, but I will also admit to not fully comprehending the details of it. How well did you know this story? I didn't know it well. I probably listened to, like, the episode on The Daily that was yes. like, this GameStop thing is happening. And, and that was actually one of the pleasures of, of of the script was going, you know, okay, wow, this is this is actually fascinating. It's a real story. It's 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 a subculture, but it's like eight million people strong on Reddit who sort of rose up against Wall Street and and actually took it to the man for a moment. You know, a lot of these these firms and these hedge funds now they have to hire people just to track what people are doing online, people who they used to make fun of and think were were shark bait for them, and and now they actually have to pay attention. So. Uh, we had the writers on during uh, the actor's strike because it's very hard to promote a film like this that has mm -hmm. uh, such a wonderful cast. Uh, Nick Offerman, uh, Seth Rogen, yourself, uh, Pete Davidson, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Shailene Woodley. Yep. Um, but we had uh, uh, Lauren uh, Sugar Blum and uh, Rebecca Angelo. They're former uh, journalists. Did it feel like when you were reading the script, like, oh, I can tell that uh, they're both great, like sort of script writers, but also have a journalism background? Well, I don't, I don't know that I, I knew that, but it was, it was, it was really thorough and 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 thorough in like a concise way, which is not so. As you can tell, the way I'm telling the story, that's not my forte. Like, <laughs> how do you sort of make that information? Also, how do you make that information like action, right? So that it's super fun to watch, um, and that you're also sort of taken in and learning something. Uh, and 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 again, I enjoyed learning about it. I mean, I was not even on social media before doing this film. And then I thought, well, okay, I have to get in touch. Like, I have, I have to be a person who's in touch with the world. So I got made these social media accounts. And like, I watched, I ended up watching these videos that, that people made during the GameStop phenomena every morning before I went to set. People made songs, they made these videos, they made these mashups, and that like energized me. I had to take the, the, the energy of, of the people and, and, and bring it to work. And it was, because it, it was a real sense of community. I think that when we think about the stock market, we think about all, it's all based on sort of greed and, and avarice and making money. But this GameStop story was a group of people that 
we're, there was sort of a collective sense that we're doing something bigger than just making cash. Yeah, and, and this was also during the pandemic, and I think people needed something to like believe in. They needed something to get behind. And one of the things I loved about my guy, whose name is Keith Gillow, went by Roaring Kitty, is just how uh, honest he was. And I feel like the stock market is a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors, right? And, and, and he was not that. He was like, no, this is, this is me. You can literally watch me trade for three hours online. Here's my spreadsheet. Here's my account. Transparency, like, look. And that realness, I think, meant a lot to people. So uh, you did some running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did some social accounts. Did some social. Can we assume now that you're a giant stock trader? She said uh, that's been my strike job. You know, yeah, just three right. three monitors. Yeah. Behind. It's hard to picture you without a headset, really. <laughs> no, I'm actually terrified of 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 that. I, I I hate I hate gambling. I hate losing money. And and if I was to get into that, I am the type of person who I have to get obsessed and go like all out. So I would stop what my current job is, and I would have to commit to that. And that is not something I want to commit to. I'd rather go make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> or 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 you want to if you commit to it, it's like a real bummer to have to go tell your family. Like I know. Yeah, I know I've been yeah, doing yeah. acting for a long time, but I think I got a new itch. <laughs> um, did, this was, uh, the other thing about this movie, and it's really impressive, is how quickly it was turned around, because this is about very recent history. And I imagine, you know, you've made movies based on things that have happened in the past, but I'm assuming you've never made something that happened in such the recent past. I don't think so. And, and, and the way information moves nowadays, just in, in the news and online, uh, you got to get in there. You got to. Yeah. You got to. You got to jump on it. Um, and 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 again, I, I, it's weird that it's weird that there's so many pieces of recent history that mean so much to so many people, and yet I can come here and just say, oh, I just heard about it on the daily, and and uh, um, yeah. But I think there's like there was a real pleasure in the sort of modern element of this for me, as opposed to a period piece like The Fablemans or something. Um, where I think I just got to bring like a lot of myself to work and to be around guys like Pete and just like be a dude and, and yeah. the movie's funny and so I had a really good time. Uh, you did not uh, reach out to uh, Keith Gill. No. Uh, what was the, what was your reasoning behind that? Well, for, okay, so, so the guy who I play, um, basically Wall Street kind of teamed up on him ultimately. He, he got deposed by Congress and he had to testify against a bunch of billionaires with all their lawyers um, and, and this is just, you, you know, sort of a, an, an average but extraordinary guy it felt like he needed to step away from yes. what he was doing. Uh, and it just felt like the vibe he was putting out was not a come stand outside my house vibe and track me down. It was a, it was a I need to step away for a moment because of what's happened. And I can't, you, this happened again during the pandemic. So the deposition, which you can, you can see, it, it was on Zoom. But I mean, this is a guy, you would, if I, I got called in to testify in front of the senators, you know, and billionaires, uh, terrifying. So I just wanted to... Uh, re respect uh, his space. Uh, I think that was the kind and uh, <laughs> correct choice. Uh, last time you were here was around the holidays, and uh, uh, your daughter, uh, not to bring up, uh, you know, uh, a painful memory, pink eye last time. <laughs> are, do, are you more hopeful about these holidays? That's right. I came out and gave you a pound, and I was yeah. like, don't worry, I wash my hands. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, 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 I love the holidays. Uh, I love Thanksgiving. I love this time of year here in New York. Do you have York. a big Thanksgiving? We do. We have my dad. We have big. I feel like fifty to sixty people every year. Fifty and, to sixty. Yeah. Well, yeah. And there, there are people I only see once a year. And okay. sadly, the pandemic, we kind of had a couple of years off. Yeah. Which, which again, it's people I only see. It's basically a family reunion every Thanksgiving. Uh, one of my cousins, thankfully, is has reorganized. And there's pictures that that predate my existence from the '70s of this Thanksgiving. So the the Dano family Thanksgiving, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. We take a photo together every year. You can see everybody growing. For, for me, it's really beautiful, so it's probably my, my favorite holiday. Where do you guys do it? Is, uh, where in the country? In Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. And uh, do you have to, is your role as one of the 60, do you have to bring something? Do you, do you have to cook some food? You know, so my, uh, pr I probably should. Yeah. I Because I, 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 it I, seems I, like you really love I it, and it's very important to you, and yet you're just kind of freeloading. <laughs> Because I grew up going, I think I'm taking a you know my my young self and thinking that my adults are still going to provide for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something really yeah. nice this year. I did yeah. say to my, uh, I said to my wife, like, you know, it's funny. Like growing up, like Thanksgiving was always my favorite holiday. And she's like, that's because you were a kid and you didn't have to do anything. Right. 
She's right. like, your memory is like a false memory. Now you're an adult. You have to get up off your ass. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, do, I, 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 I do dishes. Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. Now I get. I feel like we've uh, when we've been here and we've talked about your work. Uh, uh, you know the Batman, uh, Escape from Dannemora, which I love so much. You, your kids. Have you done anything yet? Your kids can watch. Ah, no. I mean, even this one. You got you got Pete running around. Naked. Yeah. You know, I uh, can't can't show that to them. Yeah. Uh, no, it would be fun too. That's like really where I'm at in my life right now, especially this strike year is like, yeah. you know, I got a yeah, one year old and a five year old and just be with my kids. It would be fun to do something that they could watch. They don't know what we do, even our five year old, which, which I like, but it's funny that I, I don't know if it's just what kids do or if they intuit it, but she said for her birthday, which is like next summer, but we're already planning it. Uh, <laughs> She wants it to be a costume party. She wants to write a story and have everybody act it out. Oh, that's party. great. And I was like, okay, is that just you? Is that somehow, <laughs> like, it's amazing, yeah. What is, what do they, what does she think you do? Uh, I think she thinks I, I, I'm somebody who's on a computer. Okay. <laughs> and, so she's like, what does your dad does do? This she's like, computer. Computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Computer. He's yeah. very good at computer. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's wonderful. I hope one day you make something they can watch or they'll just get old enough and enjoy your current work. Uh, it's always such a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much, Paul. Paul, <laughs> well, thank you. 